Welcome to the Sunday Morning Message with Pastor Nick Stringer, brought to you from Creekside Church in Brookville, Indiana. Creekside Church, where the Spirit flows. Today we conclude our series, Standing on Grace, with the fourth and final message of this series. And we are going to be in Galatians chapter 1. So we're actually going to go backwards to tie this all together here today. Today's message is titled, The Gospel of Grace. And we were talking a little bit about important messages. And I'm going to go over a few more important messages here. And I hope that you can see these slides. But that you see right there, that is a urinal that has been taken out of the wall. And there's a sign on the wall that says, Do Not Use. Okay, right? Common sense, not so much. Do not breathe under the water. Another important message there. Do not swallow. That's a clothes hanger. Don't swallow that. (laughs) And I think there's a little pitcher with a circle through it. Another important message. Attention, please make sure the elevator is there before stepping in. (laughs) So as you can see, the world is just filled with these important messages, right? And if we don't follow them, bad things can happen. And so God, he has given us an important message also, and it's called the gospel. And the gospel is found right here in the scriptures. And so that's what we're going to learn today. The gospel message is the most important message and my friends a question we need to ask ourselves is are you passionate for the gospel message paul emphasized this message to the churches at galatia that it was very significant important to them because they were leaving the gospel for a false gospel they were leaving the gospel for a gospel that was rooted in lies and deception the jews had infiltrated the churches in galatia And it started to spread a false gospel, saying, no, it's not faith in Christ alone. You need to first be a descendant of Abraham, and then you need to be circumcised. And Paul said, no, that is not the gospel that I delivered to you. The gospel of truth is this. Faith in Jesus Christ alone is enough, and it washes away your sins, and it saves your eternal soul. Let's read Galatians chapter 1. We're going to start with verse 1 and go through verse 9. And it reads like this, Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of men, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. To whom be the glory forevermore. Amen. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. Now, throughout this series, we have learned that God has been very gracious to us. God's grace has been the focus of our series, and we've discussed some of the wonderful fruits of our Christian faith that spring from God's grace. One, justification. We talked about how God makes you and I acceptable to him by putting the righteousness of Jesus on us through our faith in him. God looks at you and me and he says, I have taken the righteousness of my son Jesus, the holy sinless savior, and I have placed that upon you because of your faith in him. Not of anything that you have done, not of any special gifts or works that you have done, but simply based upon your faith, you have righteousness in God. Then we talked about adoption and how God graciously invites us into his family through our faith 
in Jesus Christ. You and I are sons and daughters of God through our faith. And then we talked about how we have freedom from religion. Remember we said religion, that's a dirty word. That's a bad word. We're not religious people. We are people in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And God's grace led him to set us free from the religious demands of the world because we have faith in Christ alone and that is enough. And today we tie it all together and we conclude this series with a message on the importance of the gospel and how God's grace gave the world its most significant message, the message of salvation and the only hope there is of eternal life. It was uh, the summer of 1990, and I was listening to a Reds game. They were playing the Dodgers out on the West Coast, so it was late, and I was laying in bed, and they interrupted the game with a severe weather alert, and it came across the airwaves that a tornado had touched down in Bright, Indiana, and Bright, Indiana was just over the hill where we were living at the time in Harrison on Lawrenceburg Road. And so as the evening passed and it came into morning, I remember that morning like yesterday. It was the most gorgeous morning. Bright blue crystal clear sky, a sunny day. The temperature was comfortable. And we went out and we surveyed the damage as a family. And we drove through Harrison and we saw the destruction that that tornado had caused in 1990. And so the message that I received listening to that Reds game was a very vital and important message. It allowed our family to be ready to take cover. That trouble was on the horizon. That trouble had been spotted. That calamity was indeed coming. And the time to take cover was now. Destruction was on its way. And so the gospel is that type of message. It's a message that needs to be applied immediately and with a sense of urgency. We cannot delay. We need to take shelter and cover in the gospel message now. Why? Because James 4.14 says this, Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. No, you don't. You are a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. With all the uncertainty that swirls around us, the gospel becomes an urgent matter because, my friends, we just do not know what the future holds. We do not know what a day may bring. Proverbs 27.1 on your screen there says this, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring may bring forth we just don't know what a day is going to bring forth earlier this week it was wednesday and i had a decision to make i left for work and i had two places i needed to be that day one was downtown cincinnati and the other was in saint bernard and i was making the decision and so for some reason it came over me you need to go to saint bernard i went to saint bernard and i started my day there and i thought well i'll just go downtown cincinnati around the lunch hour and i'll wrap up my day there and about 8.30 in the morning, I received a text message, and it said, it was from my manager. He said, Nick, are you downtown? And I said, no, I'm not. I'm at St. Bernard. He said, good, stay there. Don't go downtown. There's a security issue downtown. You cannot go there. They're closing the building down. Now, most of you know what I'm talking about, right, in the company and the business I'm talking about. There was a security scare. A disgruntled employee had gotten into the building, and he had made some threats. And I was going to be there. Now, fortunately, nothing had happened. Everybody was safe. They closed the building down. They sent everybody home that day. But what if? What if I had decided to go downtown? And what if he had decided to come in with an assault rifle and just start shooting up the place? What if? Well, that did happen in Buffalo, didn't it? Less than 10 days ago. I went to the grocery store Friday. These folks went to the grocery store looking to buy items on the shelves. Probably in there looking at the prices of how everything has gone up. Maybe a little disgusted. Maybe seeing no baby formula. Right? 
Anyway, their thoughts were on what they were doing. Their thoughts were on, I need these items for my home. And lo and behold, they never thought that somebody would come in and start shooting up the place. And we pray for their families, those that were lost in Buffalo in that shooting. May the Lord's peace and grace surround them as they look for closure of the, for their lost loved ones. But we just don't know what a day will bring forth. It was just yesterday we had storms in our area. There was a driver right over here on Cane Mill Road. And I don't know how this story ends. And I'm praying that it doesn't end in a bad way. And the driver of that vehicle is okay. But just driving down the road, a tree fell right on top of the vehicle. Crushing the driver's side part. So as I say, I want to treat that sensitively and pray that everything's okay. And if it did take a turn for the worse, I pray that the Lord now will comfort that family and be with them. We just don't know what a day will bring. And we just don't know the day of our death. Genesis 27, 2, Isaac said, Behold, I am old, <laughs> and I do not know the day of my death. You know, Isaac walked very closely with the Lord. He was a man of deep faith, loved the Lord immensely, and he did not know the day of his death. You know, I can walk into a cemetery, which I'll do on occasion, uh, just to walk and collect my thoughts, and I'll see a headstone there, and it'll be one of the spouse that's already deceased. It'll have the date of birth and the date of death. And then the one who's still alive, it'll have a date of birth. But there's no date of death stamped on that headstone yet. Why? Because they're still living. Why don't we know the date of death? I mean, we're so smart, right? We act like we know everything else. We act like we want to know everything else. Boy, could you imagine knowing the date of death? That's a scary thought. What if when you came out of the womb, they stamped upon you a date of death? Almost like an expiration date, right? This is how long you've got here on earth. Wow, that would be scary. I'm glad it's a mystery. You don't know exactly when that time is going to come. That information is to be held by the Father who is in heaven. And I praise God that it is. There are some mysteries that need to stay with the Lord. But that is what makes the gospel message that much more urgent, is we just do not know. And so it's with immediacy and urgency that we need to embrace the important message of the gospel. That puts us in a very vulnerable position, not knowing how much time we have on earth before we go to an eternal home. That makes the gospel message important because it can rescue us from one destination and bring us into another. And the gospel is important because the gospel rescues us. It rescues us from an evil world that we live in now. And it will rescue us from the wrath that is to come upon the world. In 1983, there was a lady by the name, a young woman, 22 year old. Tammy Odom was her name. And she set sail from Tahiti to San Diego with her uh, spouse at the time. Actually, she was, it was her fiancé. They were engaged to be married. They were going from Tahiti to San Diego, and they were aboard a 13-meter yacht, a small yacht, and they were going to set sail 3,500 nautical miles was the trip in the South Pacific Ocean there. And on the way on their trip, they ran into a Hurricane Raymond Hurricane Raymond sent waves 40 feet high crashing upon this boat. And it was doing destructive damage. And they feared for the worst. And so Tammy's fiance yelled to her. He said, go to the cabin for safety. And she quickly went to the cabin of the boat for safety. And all she can remember is hearing her fiance say these words, oh my God. And then the boat capsized. She was thrown into in the cabin of the boat and she was knocked unconscious for 27 hours. She woke up 27 hours later looking for her fiance, but there was no sign of him. He was long gone. 
So she was in the South Pacific, all alone, on a damaged boat, in need of rescue. There she was, adrift. They made a movie of that. You might be able to watch that on Netflix. I'd look it up. It's called Adrift, and it tells this story. But she was in desperate need of rescue. You and I were in desperate need of rescue. And this passage of Scripture tells us what we were in desperate need of rescue from. Galatians 1.4, we read it. Who gave himself for our sins so that he might rescue us from this present evil age. My friends, the Bible makes it very clear that things are not going to get better here, but things are going to get worse. I'm sorry, but the world will not get better. It will get worse. That's the truth of the scriptures. And as Christians, the Bible is our starting place. We don't start with our feelings, our opinions, and our thoughts. We start with what does the Bible say about that? That's where we begin. What does Scripture have to say? Not how do I feel about it or what's my opinion. What does the Bible say? And the Bible says we need rescued from this evil world. If you think things are bad now, isn't this a lovely message? <laughs> it started off good with some funny pictures, didn't it? And then, whoa, how quickly the tide turned. There is good news at the end. We need saved from this evil age, this evil world. If you think things are bad now, they're only going to get worse. Which is why Jesus, when he comes back, he teaches us what his response is going to be. He returns as the Lion of Judah. Now, the, our society and our culture has made Jesus into somebody that he is not. Is Jesus loving and compassionate? Yes, he is. Is Jesus forgiving and merciful? Yes, he is. But he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. He will come back again and he comes back as the lion of Judah and he comes to wage war. And he comes with fire of flame in his eyes. I'm going to read you a passage of scripture from the book of Revelation. It's chapter 19 and it's verses 11 through 16. And this is going to paint a picture of you of Jesus that maybe you've never heard before or maybe that the world tries to hide from you. But this is from the Bible and this is the truth about what we have to look forward to. And this is an encouraging message if you're rescued by the Lord. It says this, And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. And he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven are clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that it is with with it he may strike down the nations and he will rule them with a rod of iron and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords Jesus Christ will come back again and he will make peace but it will not be with two fingers and a hippie outfit. It will be to come and give the unrighteous the just due of their penalty. But the good news of that is that he will come and rescue those of us who love him and have put our faith and trust in him from the wrath to come. There's a period of time that's coming upon the world known as a seven-year tribulation. 
It's a time of great calamity and chaos and destruction and death. And oh, this is such a lovely message. It is a time of all those things. But it is also a time of redemption and rescue for those that love Jesus Christ. The wrath to come is the seven-year tribulation and you are saved from the wrath to come if you have faith in Christ and Christ alone. You will be spared from that. You know why? Because the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 1.10, And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus. Who what? Rescues us from what? The wrath to come. My friends, give a shout out to God. He has rescued you from the wrath to come. You will not be held under the seven-year tribulation. You will be spared from that. You will be freed from that. The wrath is on the unbelieving world, but the wrath is not on you. Why? Because your sins have been forgiven. Cast as far as the east is from the west. They have been washed clean as white as snow in the precious blood of the Lamb. The only sinless Savior, Jesus Christ. It is in him we put our faith and our trust in. It is in him and him alone. And he washes us clean. Your sins have been forgiven. Your ledger is clear. They do this thing in law called an expungement. Where they take something nasty on your record and they get rid of it. And that's what God does to your record. And you don't even have to pay to have it done. All you have to do, and I say all, and it's not an easy thing. I don't want to mislead you. It's not easy. You know what you have to do? You have to surrender your pride. You have to put aside the stubbornness. You have to put aside, hey, it may not feel comfortable. It may not feel easy. But it's what the Lord requires. Why? Because the Lord is real. He's a real God. He says, this is not phony business I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with you. I'm dealing with your heart. Come to me. Trust me. Surrender to me. Put your faith in my son, Jesus Christ. And I promise I will take care of you. We do not know what a day will bring. We do not know when our hour is up. We do not know the date of our death. But we can have peace and joy and security knowing that Jesus Christ is holding us in his hands and he will forevermore take us with him to be with the Lord and forever we will be with him. We will forever be with the Lord if our trust is with him. He rescues us from this world and from the wrath to come. Why else is the gospel message important? The gospel message important because you are important to God. God loves you. God created you. And I do not want you to buy into Satan's lie that you're an accident or that you are a product of circumstances. You are not. There's a great debate in our country now, pro-choice, pro-life. But I want to say God makes no accidents. God knows exactly what he's doing. No one is here accidentally. And no one is here because they're a product of circumstances. God has created you special and unique. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And what he desires more than anything is for you to connect with him. Search for me. Seek for me. Call my name and I will come into your life. I will answer you. And I will give you peace. I will give you the assurance you need. I will give you the hope and the future that you desire. Because this world does not have a hope and a future for us. This is not our home. This is a temporary dwelling. Our home is in heaven with the Lord. You are important to God. So why? what did God do? Well, Galatians 1.1 1, 1, he sent Paul his apostle. He sent his apostles. He sent his messengers. He said, I have an important message to deliver. And I need to send people who are here on this earth that I can trust that will deliver that message. So he sent Paul. Now, it was a very neat act of God why he sent Paul. Because you see, Paul was a man who was actually against Christians. Paul was a man who was sent out to go get Christians in other parts of the world 
and bring them back to Jerusalem for trial. And he watched some Christians be murdered and stoned, and he did so with hearty approval. But God took his heart and he changed his heart. And he used a man who was against him to be one of the greatest apostles for him. That is the change that God can make in our lives. He changes our perspective. He changes our desires. He changes our heart. He changed the heart of Paul. He changed the heart of those fishermen. He changed the heart of those tax collectors. And he said, here's this message of urgency that I need you to send out to the world. It's called the gospel. And by it, people will be rescued. Rescued from the wrath to come. Rescued from the day of judgment. Freed from their sins. Washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And then he sent his son. He sent his son, Jesus. Think about that for just a moment. God in heaven. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, left heaven and came down to dwell among men in this filthy, dirty, stinking world. That is love right there. He came here to dwell with us in the midst of our muck and mire in the midst of our dirt and our filth in the midst of our killing each other and slandering each other in the midst of our deception our stealing our lies in the midst of all that he came and he offered us love and he offered us grace and he offered us these beautiful things that come from heaven above and he sent a message. Paul Revere in 1775 went on a midnight ride and he took a message, a very important message. He said, the British are coming. The British are coming. And it was because of the delivery of that message that the colonies, colonies were able to take up arms and prepare for a British invasion. Jesus Christ has sent us the gospel message to prepare for an invasion. Not an invasion just of a wrath to come, but an invasion of your spirit. There is a spiritual war taking place, and he says, take up arms, young men and women. Here is the gospel, the gospel that you will need, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of truth, the gospel of of grace and you may be thinking to yourself well, why doesn't God do more why doesn't God do more I want to see God's face I want to see his face and then and then I'll believe I need God to do more my friend God has done enough he has given you all the information you need in your heart your mind your spirit the evidence of creation all around you he has given us the Bible he has given us the word preached. Enough is enough. And it is time to respond to the message of life and the message of salvation. It is time to choose the Lord. Will you bow your heads with me and pray? Father God in heaven, thank you for this message of the gospel. You have so graciously given us that which we do not deserve. That's why it's called grace. And that is why it's amazing. Undeserved favor. You have given us the opposite of what we deserve. You have given us a message of hope. You have given us a message of salvation and security. You have given us a hope and a future heavenly father i pray that we will take this message with urgency if you're here this morning if you've never accepted christ if you've never had the gospel message taken into your heart you can do that right now right where you are all i'm asking is that you open yourself up right now Open your heart to receive Jesus Christ. He loves you and he wants you to be safe and secure with him in heaven forever. You can pray just like this. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want to be with you in heaven one day. Please, Lord, 
forgive me of my sin. Wash my sins away as you promised to do. I will trust you and you alone. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you are the only Son of God. Jesus, I believe that you went to the cross and you died for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you were placed in a tomb and on the third day you rose again. Jesus, I believe that you defeated death and I believe that you provide salvation for all those who believe. Jesus, I believe in you. Save me now. Come into my heart. Come into my life. And I love you, Lord, with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Father, thank you for your most wonderful, gracious, and glorious message. The message of peace, a message of hope, and a message of life. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Sunday message by Pastor Nick Stringer at Creekside Church in Brookville, Indiana. For more information, you can go to www.creekside-church.org and find us on the website. Once again, you've been listening to the Sunday message with Pastor Nick Stringer.